Hello everybody, welcome back to Map Labs number 9, back on track. We are continuing today with Retreat in Advance. For those that haven't watched the previous videos, I'm doing a blind playthrough first, no commentary. Some people like that. And then I'm going to go through again with uh, my normal commentary review and complaining about stair metrics and stuff. There will be time codes in the description if you want to skip forward if the um, YouTube play chapter thingy doesn't work. So, here we go. Let me get out of your way.
Okay, so here we go. Yet again, retreat and advance. Did I say the name the first time? I have no idea. This is overall a pretty solid map. Um, combat was pretty decent for the most part. And item economy is pretty good. I'm kind of focused, I'm focusing on the uh, combat side of it because, you know, what's fun is um, kind of most important. In my opinion. So, um, I think there are a huge number of props <laughs> in this in this very large room. And odd custom chandeliers. It it seems like a lot of stuff in this space that you don't really revisit. So that's my only concern. Um I think the mm, the intro to this combat space is could use some um, upgrading, if that makes sense. Let me let me clear out everybody, and then I can um, talk about this. How did I accidentally lower the shields the first time? Combine lowered it the first time.
All right, so there's a problem with doors in combat where the optimal strategy is to hide in the doorway because it is a choke point for the enemies to go through, and I am like completely safe here. And so, in my opinion, you kind of want to entice the player to engage with the space. And this out here is this combat space, not in here. So, the problem in my mind that I instantly want to solve is, how do I get the player into this space? And that can be a difficult question to ask, and it is highly variable based on the placement of your enemies, um, you know, the items you have available, and whatnot. So, spitballing ideas here. If there are windows in here that you can see out of, that makes this space less um, concretely safe for the player to, like, just hunker down because they have doors, or windows rather, that the enemies can shoot through. Um, having the enemies placed farther back and having them visibly starting to advance towards the player when the player is, like, you know, right here. Like, say there's a trigger in the door. in addition to when an enemy takes damage. So if the player stays back here and shoots an enemy, you know, you can't control that. But if they go through the door, all the enemies, like, turn around, they're like, oh my god, it's Gordon, and then they start running forward. That way, like, you know, the player can be like, I got a first shot, I'm taking a surprise attack on unaware enemies, and I can kind of dictate the beginning flow of the combat rather than... I come up here, I open the door, and there's instantly a guy like right here shooting at me. And your first instinct is like, oh, I gotta hide, get out of line of fire, and stuff from that one guy. Uh, you can also draw in players into a space. You know, if there was a combat shot, a combat shotgun? What the hell am I saying? If there's like a shotgun right here, you know, and you're like, oh, I want the shotgun. But you already start with the shotgun, so that's kind of a moot point. But something to consider maybe for the future in terms of... As an enticement, there could be like health or shields, you know, etc., etc. There could be just basic goodies right here um, to get the player to into this space to engage with it. Obviously, there's nothing preventing the player from like snatching all the goodies, seeing all the enemies, and running back and going away. That, you know, there's a certain amount of acceptance on the designer's part in terms of the player's going to do what they do. I can't control that, but you kind of want to. Uh, suggest, <laughs> air quotes, in terms of like how I want the player to engage with the space. And there's always going to be edge cases, it's always going to be something to accept. Um, so anyway, in terms of this combat space, and getting the player through that door, that was like a three minute talk on, on that kind of stuff. Um, there is like, they are only Metro Cops, I think the amount of cover is kind of, kind of sparse. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. There was a lot of movement. Uh, you had, like, people out here, and then you have a combat front over here. Um, maybe, like, stuff in here to act as cover, because the only two options of cover for the player in this space is, you know, structural stuff, rather than, like, a crate, or a dumpster, or a garbage can, or, you know, whatever. Um, I do like the little nooks and crannies with the uh, the crates and stuff, which is really nice. Um, I don't know if I went down here before. Just more explorable space. Alright, it's fine. Um, I do like the buildings. The uh, skyline is, is kind of flat. In the, uh, maybe flat is a wrong term here. The buildings are all sort of the same height, so that's what I'm saying in terms of flat, except for this orange one. They're all kind of the same height. Um, you can vary it up, you know, like these deep buildings can be like two-story buildings or like a like a weird Tetris shape, like a short two-story part and then like an upper part, you know, I don't know if buildings like that actually exist. Um, you can also add, like, stuff on top, like those antennas and, um, you know, power cables coming into the space, you know, to spice it up, just so that it breaks up the, the line of space. But the buildings do look pretty nice. Alright, moving on. Hello. Um, 
I, I I think you might have seen in the blind playthrough here, I kind of like didn't really know exactly where I was supposed to go. Um, I don't know if this door is like initially locked and if this guy is like supposed to come out here and be like, hey, what's up, the bros and stuff, come follow me or anything. This space is really small for one, two, three, four, five, for five Metro Cops. Um, there's not a lot of space for them to move. It's kind of awkward. I guess the player could move up in terms of these, after these first two or three are dead. I don't know. Uh, it's it. It feels, it feels like a lot. It's a pretty minor point. I'm gonna throw that out there at the beginning. Um, it's a pretty minor point, but it feels like there's just a lot of cops here. Anytime I have like enemies all dying in the same spot, or very close to the same spot, I feel like that's that's an issue for me anyway. And you know, if like one came through this door and one came through this door, um, and and I don't know, that might be. Kind of a way to spread it out and stuff, but anyways, um, I do like that this is showing what the button here is connecting to. I didn't even see the combine soldiers running in the first time, but um, I do like Let me get out of your way. anytime I'm pressing a button, seeing what the effect is. Feels like the enemies just kind of stand out in the open a lot and don't really move around. Like almost. Uh, I don't really know what's going on here with that. Like, an enemy should not be doing that, right? Like, it, it breaks kind of the illusion of a self-preservation instinct in an animal that if I'm getting shot, I don't just, I don't just sit there in the wide open doing nothing. Um, I wanted to... Oh man. Is it this? Here we go. Alright, Navmesh is there. This was what I suspected was not, like, solid, but I was wrong, so I don't know why. Um, I'm guessing maybe they don't have, uh, like, cover nodes in the space, maybe? That's why they don't really kind of move around, because Sitting out in the open is a viable thing to the AI. I did like the, um, I kind of totally broke it because I pulled all the enemies over here and stuff, but the... Like, this space is a combat space, it's pretty nice. Um, you have like a left or a right area to go to. Um, the enemies seem to, well, they did the first time anyway, not the second time, but they seem to hang back, like, pretty, pretty noticeably. And then, um, the gunship fight. Ah, I don't have any, I don't have really big, um, complaints against this. Uh, there's a lot of safe area and there's a lot of not safe area. Which I think is is fine. Um, I would 
I would like to see... I mean, gunships are, like, supposed to be scary and imposing and stuff, right? Like, I would love to see them, like, shooting, you know, and destroying parts of this roof. It doesn't have to, like... It doesn't have to uh, destroy it in terms of, like, viable cover to protect the player. Um, but just, like, you know, break a chunk out of it or something, dig up stuff on the ground. Um, that's fairly inconsequential to the gameplay. Oh, yeah, that was one thing I forgot. Um, it's fairly inconsequential to gameplay, but it would make it feel like this is this is a large thing with consequences and it is destroying a thing, if that makes any sense. Um, your sky so rockets hit the skybox and they instantly poof. So when you're doing a gunship battle, it's important to um, kind of create a maybe larger than a normal um, skybox. So rockets don't accidentally hit the ceiling and then it's just like, what the heck? Because then you're, it's designer hand stuff that's kind of janking up the fight instead of the player like messing up and stuff. And then as soon as I can... Is that it? <laughs> I don't remember what that command is. I was just trying to kill these things instantly. There's one last big thing. They hide too much. There we go. You don't let the, you don't let the players see them explode into cool things. It's really it, it's a pet peeve <laughs> when um, there's a gunship fight and then it just fades to black like instantly when they die instead of like when they crash. Like validate the player as doing something awesome in terms of they just shot down two gunships. Go have some rebels show up. Be like, wow, Gordon, you're so hot. Have my babies, you know, that, that was super awesome, I want to be you, and stuff. Um, have them crash into a building in, like, a bunch of fire... something. Something. Make it spectacle, right? Frickin' put on your Michael Bay hat and just go crazy with the amount of bombastic stuff there. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm trying to do two of these a day, like one in the morning, one in the evening ish uh, American time so if you're like waiting for your map to show up it's gonna you know you can plan your schedule anyways thanks again for watching until next time take care everybody bye bye